What is up guys, welcome back to DCS World and welcome aboard the A10C for another tutorial. Today is where things start to get interesting. We're going to explore the first of the plethora of precision guided munitions or PGMs that the A10 can employ, starting with laser guided bombs or LGBs. We've got a few different flavors of LGB that we can have. We can have the GBU-12 or guided bomb unit, uh, version 12 which is a 500 pound, essentially Mark 82, with a laser guidance kit attached. And I've got one on my wing right there. That's sort of what it looks like. You can see it's got the laser guidance kit on the front. It's a funny little, uh, funny little seeker head looking thing there. We can also have the GBU-10, which is a 2,000 pound laser guided bomb. Uh, which is essentially a converted Mark 84 2,000 pound bomb with a laser seeker head attached to it. So let's go on over to our left side here and set up some of our usual stuff. All right, so we want to make sure our master arm is armed. We want to make sure our TGP is on because we definitely need the targeting pod. We want to make sure our laser is armed. Make sure it's not set to train or safe. Make sure it's up in the arm position. Master arm, as I mentioned, in the up position. Let's go into the DSMS. Check out our profiles here. Let's select GBU-12. And let's check a few settings. I've, I've set a few things up here, but I'm going to point them out already. We want to make sure our mode is CCRP. You can drop these in CCIP and they will work. However, I don't recommend it in the A10C just because the A10C is not a fast mover. If you were doing this in, say, a Hornet, a CCIP drop with a laser guided bomb would be just fine, or a Tomcat, or whatever. anything that can get over 500 knots in a dive safely. The A10C cannot, so don't worry about that. CCRP will work for us today. Uh, our drop profile is going to be single. We're going to keep the nose and tail fuse here. And we're going to go over to the settings page. A few settings we want here. We have auto LS. It stands for auto laze. What this means is that when we drop the bomb at a set time before impact, the laser is going to come on automatically for us. We don't have to do anything. So we definitely want that on. It defaults to off, so just tick it on. And then our next setting over here is LS time or laze time. Uh, what I usually do is set this to either 10 or 15 seconds. We're going to use 15 seconds today. So we'll go up to the UFC and type 1-5. And then plug it in. So we just want to make sure that our LS time is 15 seconds. And our auto lays is set to on. Let's go ahead and save. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the GBU-10. I've got one... 2,000 pounder loaded, so we're going to drop that too. Same setting here, single, nose and tail, CCRP, change settings, lays time 15, auto lays on, make sure everything's good. I'm not going to change anything because I've already set it up, so return, profile name, and stat. Now, on the concept of laser codes, notice how each of the stations that has a GBU on it has a code here currently set to 1688. That is the laser identifier code. That means that this bomb is going to home in and seek a laser that has this code associated to it. Our laser designator can uh, use uh, a pretty wide number of codes. Uh, there is a certain range to where it is invalid, but uh, we're going to leave it at the default of 1688. However, I will point out if you do want to change your bomb's laser code, you do it here from the inventory screen. Select one of the stations with your bombs on it. We'll select station 6. It is a GBU. That one is a GBU 10. And then you change the laser code here. You can punch in numbers from the UFC and plug them in here. I'm not going to change anything here because we're going to just use the defaults today to keep it simple. Back to the status page, and that's all we need to set up on the DSMS. Now, let's go over to the right side. We need to get our targeting pod up, so let's click TGP. Pause the camera. We're going to TGP. 
let's make it our sensor of interest since we're working with it with Cooley right long. And on the subject of laser codes, again, you can change the targeting pod's laser code. So the way you would do that is from this button here, go to the air to ground control page. And then you've got a field here labeled L for laser. And you just plug in numbers from the UFC just like before and plug them in here. Don't worry about LSS for now, that's laser spot search. We'll, look, we'll explore that in a little bit when we uh, talk about buddy lasing and uh, AFAC. But for now, we're just concerned with this field. And again, we're going to leave it at the default of 1688 just to keep things simple. So let's hit return. Now, we need to get our targeting pod onto a target, and we need to get that target into a point track. So I've got a waypoint set up on top of a target's head over here just from mission planning that I know about. You alternatively can, you know, slew your targeting pod around looking for targets. That's fine, too. Uh, let's bore sight it and then go China hat forward long. I'm just going to put it into IR mode and zoom in. There's our target. And we're going to click TMS up short a couple of times to get us into a point track. And there we go. You can see we are in a point track. All right. We now need to designate a SPI. So we, we designate a SPI with the targeting pod with TMS up long, TMS forward long. We now have a SPI created on this target. We know that the SPI is given by the TGP, as before, with TGP in the lower left portion of the HUD. All right, now all that's left to do is get lined up to drop this bomb. I'm going to straighten out here, get some separation from our targets, and then fly on in. I want to get about maybe 6 to 10 miles out. And I'm doing this from about 15,000-ish feet, 16,000 feet. You want to be relatively high up um, because that will enable your targeting pod to get a good accurate laze and maintain a point track on the target. If you're down too low, you can run into issues. So uh, with laser-guided bombs in CCRP, higher is better. Let's also select our weapons here with making the HUD soy and then using our DMS left and right to select our GBU-12s. We know GBU-12 is selected because we see it there in the HUD, and the GBU-12 pylons are highlighted. So just coming out here, stand by while I get lined up and turned around. All right, so we're getting lined up here. And quick pause just to talk about it. We've got our typical CCRP symbology, the reticle, the azimuth steering line, the bomb fall line, and the solution queue. Just like with our CCRP drops before, we want to get them lined up. However, because this is a guided bomb, it is not a dumb bomb, we don't need to be perfectly accurate with our lineup. So don't feel like you need to get the lines perfectly aligned. Just get the azimuth steering line, the ASL, that is this long line here somewhere inside this circle when the ball starts falling and you should be good to go. Uh, reminder with CCRP drops, when the ball starts falling, you press and hold weapon release button until the ball, until the bomb rather comes off the rack. Do not release the weapon release button until the bomb drops. I can't stress that enough. In this airplane, it breaks a whole lot of things if you don't hold the button down long enough. So bear that in mind. So I'm just getting lined up here. Roughly lined up. I'm not concerned that it's not perfect. And I'm actually going to toggle my autopilot on here. Just to help us out a little bit. You can see I've got the targets in a point track on my targeting pod, that's important. You can area track the ground for a laze, but it's best to point track a vehicle. 15 seconds to release, as you can see. 10 seconds, holding weapon release. 
Here comes the fall. And that's a paveway. So, quick pause here. Looking at the targeting pod, we've got a little bit of info. Down here we have a time to impact. This little number 25, that means there's 25 seconds to impact. When this number reaches 15, we're going to start seeing the L here. In fact, I'm just going to pause the camera on the TGP so we can watch. This L here is going to start flashing when the laser starts firing. So let's unpause and watch. It's 15 seconds, L is flashing. Zoom the pod out just a little bit. Five seconds, passing over the target. Impact, now, boom, right on his head. That BTR-80 is toasted. Pretty cool, right? So that's one way we can drop laser-guided bombs. Um, like I mentioned, you can CCIP them, but I don't recommend it. Um, now let's do another drop and I want to actually show you the bomb itself falling from the F6 cam so you can see how the control surfaces work and I have a few things to talk about there so stand by while I turn around and get lined up with another target. Alright so we're lined up with another target here. I've got a speed created, EMS forward long. And in this case, we're going to drop the GBU-10. As you can see, the GBU-10 is selected. This one's going to create a nice big boom. Just getting her lined up. That should be good right there. Correct a little bit. And the autopilot on to make it easy and we'll fly straight ahead. 20 seconds to drop. Ten seconds. Holding the weapon release button. Pull up, pull up. And that's a bomb away. go to the F6 cam and take a look. So this is what the GBU-10 looks like. It's got big control fins. Now, all right, it's tracking. You see how it's wobbling around? Quick pause while we're looking at this. The GBU-10 and 12 have what are called bang-bang control surfaces, meaning they don't just gently deflect their steering fins to steer. They either go full in one direction or full in another direction or no deflection at all. So that's why the bomb wobbles so much. And that's why we set a laze time of about 15 seconds to impact because if you try to laze before then and get the bomb to start tracking, it can actually lose too much of its energy and it may even fall short of the target. So you wanna be somewhat conservative with your laze times and you'll usually have good luck. But let's watch this guy fall and you can watch it continue to wobble as it seeks the laser. goes tracking nicely those guys are in for a world of hurt boom a lot of fun so there you go guys that's uh the basics of how you use laser guided bombs in the a10 uh, a little bit more involved than some of the things we've done but still relatively straightforward uh, with a little bit of practice to get the steps right and um, you'll be dropping bombs on tanks' heads in no time. Things to bear in mind uh, real quick before we depart. Uh, Laser-guided bombs are great for moving targets as well, if you can get them in a point track on the targeting pod. Um, and they are good for popping a target uh, in a really tight space if you need to, uh, because they are so accurate that way. 
Um, but that's really all I have to say on laser guided bombs. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed that and I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you guys for the next video. Take care.